All right, yo, what's going on, everybody? Swagkage here, and welcome to today's video, where we're going to be talking about Boruto Episode 2, titled The Hokage Sun. So, as the title of this episode seems to imply, one of its main points of focus is that Boruto is the son of Naruto Uzumaki, the seventh Hokage, and now, while I did like this episode, one thing that got really tiring really fast, I, I guess the writers really want you to know that the characters don't like Boruto because he's riding on his father's coattails, or in other words, he's He's, um, he's just skating through life thanks to being the son of the seventh Hokage. And I guess that's a fine dynamic for the show to have, but every single character pretty much drills this into your head. I mean, the phrase he's writing on the Hokage's coattails was uttered so many times in this episode. You know, the series normally has really organic writing, but it just really stuck out to me how many times these characters said that phrase in particular. And I guess the point of this episode was to show that Boruto isn't that reliant on his dad after all. No surprise there, though, if you've seen Boruto Naruto the movie, it, it's pretty clear. Um, but yeah, anyway, so, um, aside from that, I guess another purpose that this episode serves is to introduce everybody to all of the new children, because they didn't have too much time on screen in episode one. I actually got a better feel for the personalities of many of the members of the next generation from this episode than I did from either the movie or from the manga. Inojin in particular is, uh, uh, pretty snarky, sarcastic. He's very reminiscent of Sai when he was first introduced to Naruto Shippuden, but I think he's a bit more interesting. Chocho has a bit more personality here than I think we've really seen from her before. There's this new kid, Iwabi. I mean, I think that the, um, one of the strengths that the show has so far is character writing, but I'm probably getting a little bit ahead of myself, so let me go ahead and lay out a quick plot synopsis. There's not much to spoil in this episode since, I mean, there's, there aren't really any surprises if you go into this episode knowing what the plot is already, uh, that's not really a bad thing. There also aren't too many key plot points to talk about here, so this isn't gonna take long at all. It might sound like I'm about to leave a whole bunch of stuff out, but no. So basically the plot is Boruto, Shikadai, and Denki all go to the academy together, and it's established very early on in this episode that while it used to be a ninja academy specifically focused on teaching children how to become shinobi, now it's become much more of a uh, just like a regular school. And while there are classes you can take to become a shinobi, the curriculum inside of the school is, uh, it's much broader. You probably have to take, like, science classes, history classes, that sort of thing, you know, uh, before you can be given the rank of genin. And, um, that's actually a pretty big plot point at least later on in this episode, and it's something that I'm not a really big fan of, but I'll get into that later. Uh, so after that, you know, they go in, Boruto is just being Boruto, you know, he's all like, oh, I forgot my textbook, this, that, and the other. The kids start talking about how last episode he crashed a runaway train into <laughs> Naruto's stone face, and how he only got away with it because he's the son of the Hokage. Uh, you know, it's very clear that there's a lot of animosity towards Boruto, because of, uh, you know, his privileged status. Then we cut to all of the kids being tested. Shino, who is an instructor at the academy, for those who didn't already know, explains that I guess it's standard procedure now for the academy to get an idea of what all of its students are capable of, at least when teaching them how to become ninja, anyway. I don't know how all of the basic classes work. Those weren't really talked about here. But, um, anyway, so Boruto has some of the highest scores in the class. As a matter of fact, he's ranked second, and he's a little bit bummed out that he didn't come in first place, and he finds out that the guy who did come in first place is a kid named Iwabe, and he's currently in his third year at the academy after flunking the previous two years. Iwabe explains that he doesn't like Boruto because Boruto's just kind of a snob thanks to being the son of the Hokage, then the two end up fighting and we get a pretty cool fight scene, and then the episode pretty much ends. So yeah, that's the plot. As for what I thought about the episode, I thought it was pretty good. Uh, the writing was just as good in this episode, if not better than it was in the first. Though I do have one issue with it, of course, and that is that everybody kept spouting off that Boruto was riding on Naruto's coattails, like, all episode long. I'm serious, it's really annoying. It happens a lot. But aside from that, the writing was good. I can't really complain about it. I mean, like I mentioned in my last review, the dialogue does feel pretty campy at points, but it's nothing that really takes away from the series. I mean, it's no worse than the writing 
rating was in Naruto and Shippuden, so, like, whatever. I don't I don't really care about it. It's not much of a complaint. Um, in terms of, like, the writing for the overall plot, I thought the episode was structured well. I thought, you know, the uh, series of events that we saw in the episode was, was fine. It was interesting enough to keep me hooked. It wasn't anything exceptional, but for a second episode, sure, it's fine. The directing was pretty good as usual, though the art and animation wasn't as consistently good in this episode as it was in the first episode, and I really hope it's not, like, straight downhill from here <laughs> like it was with Dragon Ball Super, because I really, really, really liked how pretty the first episode was, and this episode looked a little bit bland and even a little bit ugly at some points, so I'm just kind of praying that this is as bad as it gets, because I know that this anime has the potential to look a lot better than it did at many points in this episode. Not to say it was bad, it's just it looked better last week, you know. Uh, some of the animation was stiff, some of the art was a bit eh. You know, it just it could have been better. It's not a huge gripe of mine. I think you guys get the idea. Now in terms of like big issues that I had with the episode. There weren't really any, aside from the overuse of the phrase that I've already mentioned twice. And another issue that I had, which is the fact that Boruto has the second highest score in his entire class. I mentioned that in my plot synopsis, but I didn't really discuss it, and that really gets on my nerves. Regardless of what you think about Naruto in the later half of Shippuden, I'm pretty sure most people will agree with me that Part 1 Naruto was a far more compelling main character than Boruto is, because Boruto is, like, good at everything. I related to Naruto as a kid because he was this... Uh, he, he was just this underdog who still managed to, to accomplish whatever it was he was setting out to, despite the fact that all conceivable odds were stacked against him. But with Boruto, you don't really feel the same thing. Like, he just kind of gets whatever he wants because he's Boruto. He's the son of the Hokage. He's good at everything. I mean, he's certainly a lot more likable in this anime than he was in the movie or in the manga, but... Uh, I just really hope they tone down how OP they're making him. That's not an issue I have with this episode in particular, though. That's just an issue I have with the Boruto era in general. I do not like Boruto, and I do not like how strong he is. I should probably get into talking about the fight at the end, by the way. Um, it was pretty good. It was actually really nice to see a fight reminiscent of Part 1 in this series, and I really hope we get a whole lot more of those, though the fight wasn't as good as a whole lot of the fights in Part 1 were. It was just a nice return to form and it was a nice throwback to the days when people were still hurt by kunai knives. Now, it's nice seeing Genin-level battles again, but this wasn't the best fight. You know, there were many fights in part one that just looked better than this one, were directed better than this one, that sort of thing. But again, it was just nice to see, and I think that that's a pretty good indicator of the types of fights we're going to see later on in this series. Speaking of the fight, I think the reason for the fight is worth talking about. Uh, I also mentioned in my plot synopsis that the Ninja Academy is now more like a regular school than it is an academy to train shinobi, and I'm not a huge fan of that, and I'm not really a huge fan of how this new era feels. Iwabe says something that, like, it's really meta. It's as if the writers of the Boruto anime have heard everything bad that everybody has said about the Boruto era, because he points out that he isn't very happy with how soft the ninja world has gotten since Naruto became Hokage, and that's a big problem that I have with this era in general, too. The idea of a ninja, just everything that Naruto and the rest of his ninja peers had to go through just to become Genin and eventually Chunin was crazy. Everything felt very grounded and gritty. I think the manga really tried its hardest to set out and make it clear that the world of Naruto was not a very forgiving one, and that it was a uh, it was a very hostile, very demanding world to be a part of. Whereas Boruto feels way more lighthearted, and you know, it doesn't, there's not this looming sense of danger everywhere like there was with, uh, with, uh, part one of Naruto, and it's, I mean, I guess I can handle it, like, whatever, I'm fine with a tone shift, but I, I just really don't like the new setting of uh, Boruto as much as I liked um, the ninja world that we saw in part one and in Shippuden. Now, all that said, I think what the team behind Boruto is doing with the source material that they're given is phenomenal. I think they're doing a great job executing the concepts that uh, they've been provided with, and 
I think these first two episodes have been really good for what they are. This episode wasn't perfect, but I was a pretty big fan of it. I think I'd give it a 3.5 out of 5, uh, maybe a 4. I'd highly recommend watching it, along with the first episode if you, for some reason, haven't watched it already. Uh, my only real gripe with these first two episodes is that nothing of real importance is happening, and I feel like these are just, uh, you know, these are just meant to ease us in to this uh, new era and to this new setting and uh, shift the focus away from Naruto that was present in the Boruto movie and the Boruto manga and on to Boruto and his classmates so that, you know, it's just easier to jump into these uh, first few arcs where things do start to pick up and the ball does start to get rolling. If you want to leave your own thoughts about the episode in the comments below, go ahead and do that. Uh, I'd love to get a discussion started about the episode. Um, and if you have any questions, like, about any of, uh, my thoughts about any specific parts of the episode you want to ask me, of course, make sure to ask them in the comments below. I'd love to answer some of, uh, some of your questions. But, um, anyways, that's enough of that. Thank you for watching the review all the way to the end. Really appreciate it. Like, seriously. Hope to see you in my next video. Till next time, talk to you later. Swaikage out. Bye.